I want to take a moment to explain the kind of lifting gear that I'm using here. I do have a variety of uh, rigging slings and chokers that I could use, but I find that this particular one for as light a load as this is works perfectly for me because the problem with PVC pipe is that it's very smooth and so it has a tendency to slip. And since the rig's not tall enough to be able to put a set of pipe elevators which would clamp around the bottom of this coupling here and be chained off and, and rigged above it because the pipe and the handle is taller than the rig itself given the height of the of the well casing I have to improvise and use a sling, a nylon sling to choke it off and uh, lower the pipe in a section at a time and this particular sling is a, it's a, is a Petzl um, nylon sling or choker that's used for climbing and it's uh, rated at a standard 22 kn uh, which is a European unit of measure I think it's kilo newtons and basically that's a unit of measure for the amount of force that this um, nylon sling can momentarily endure during a fall up a of a climber with his gear and that's based on one tenth of that weight rating of 5,000 pounds so 500 pound person and all the gear that's a maximum situation of course one tenth the rated weight falling at 32 feet per second gravity exerting a force of uh, 10 G's this will provide um, enough strength to stop the fall and of course anything rated past that is going to injure the the person falling so this is pretty much a standard unit of measure and, and uh, safety rating but I find that in situations like this when we're dealing with you know 250 300 pounds that something like this is such a quality sling and with a tremendous weight rating that it's more than sufficient for lifting or lowering a load like this and so what I do is I put a simple choke here and then I put a slip knot as you can see and what I'll do is I'll twist it so it provides force against the pipe and I will always have my hand clenched on it once I cinch up on the winch and it bites real good I never let my hand off of it as I'm either raising the load or lowering the load and it works great in this particular application so the point is, is that you have to have a variety of slings, chokers, and accessories, and even some improvised things that will work safely for you. Um, when in doubt, ask someone that's familiar with rigging standards what might be the best for your situation and have uh, a variety of options to try out uh, in, a, in a safe uh, control situation before you actually do any lifting uh, in real time. Well, we are at the 100 foot mark. We've got 10 sticks of pipe down in the hole. And thankfully we have about 6 foot of electrical wire as a lead that we can go ahead and make the splice with a crimper right there on the base of the lifting rig. So the, the clamp is engaged. We've got the uh, 
electric winch choked off the T-handle. We're going to go ahead and grab some lunch, take a break, and come back and we'll proceed from there. We'll get it uh, crimped up and get the second section of 150 foot spool of wire connected and heat shrunk and move on. Welcome to another hot and humid day in the Ozarks. I've had an opportunity to look at this control box and some of the the wiring and I've basically decided how I'm going to go ahead and coordinate and get everything set up. Leave it to the Chinese to, uh, to confuse the issue because they sent a control box that appears to be able to wire not only uh, 220 but 110 as well as evidenced by the fact that they've, they have a 110 volt plug attached to the control box uh, in light of the fact or in spite of the fact that it is designated as 220 uh, volt 60 hertz and within a range of horsepowers here and also that the control box is designated as uh, two horsepower at, at uh, kilowatt and a half at 220 volt 60 hertz so looking at the diagram um, they provided basically set up for a 110 volt circuit as you can see inside uh, how exactly how it's wired and the various legs going to the to the three wire type uh, motor with a capacitor in the control box here, but it's actually four wires and so looking at the diagram you have your your line in and your neutral Which uh, can be substituted as L1 and L2 two hots coming off a 220 volt circuit 110 to 110 is what we're going to do here um, So I'm going to disregard that designation neutral designation the ground is designated by PE is going to be the same and uh, both legs are going to go through this uh, double pole single throw switch which is right here and you see the uh, the O for off and the line for on or in line of which one leg will go through the 20 amp circuit breaker slash overload protector here uh, at which point the one leg which should be represented by a red wire the other leg by a black wire um, is going to run down to how they've got it designated as black going to the motor here but it's a direct uh, um, hot feed to the motor the other hot is going to go through uh, also to the motor but break off and and provide a third leg through the capacitor which you see here this is the the second hot and goes through the switch and down into the motor but it breaks off here goes through the capacitor and provides the the star capacitor leg which is the third one and then of course the last one is the ground and so it appears that this can be successfully wired to accommodate the designation as 220 volts um, but like I said leave it to them to uh, to get the whole thing confused by having this diagram in here instead of something that uh, is a lot more clear for the 220 volt application um, also these two legs and the ground are going to be coming off of this which is going to add to the confusion even more for the average layperson a four wire plug off the generator this L1430 amp plug of which this is the ground this would be commonly the neutral and these two uh, hot legs here L1 and L2 we're only going to be using um, a three wire because the the neutral is going to be a dead leg or or discarded for the reason that it's not necessary for a neutral is not necessary for a 20, 20 volt application so basically since uh, this should be red and, and black it's it's going to be white and black white and black here for L1 and L2 the ground of course is going to be this L shaped prong and this is just going to be empty now if uh, this were a splitter cord where we needed 210 volt legs then we'd need this to be a four wire because then you'd have a hot ground and a hot neutral which would provide you with two uh, 220 volt legs to take opportunity for the full amperage off the generator so that not being the case we're just going to use three wires because this is going to be a dedicated 220 volt circuit to the pump and so that's one of the reasons why we're, we I only bought the three wire cord here because we don't need this neutral for this application so um, that's the basic reasoning behind how this is going to run uh, and to further complicate the fact that 
this is not going to be a direct wire here to this box. Uh, the Chinese didn't use traditional uh, color coding, but it is clear that they have the um, one hot leg, another hot leg. This is the brown as the capacitor as indicated here, and this is of course the ground. Uh, that we have to slice, splice in this US color code designated uh, wire bundle here which to my to my distress is I thought was stranded but it's solid pump wire which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to splice properly and to handle and lower and secure against the pipe. I just found this out that it's solid wires. I thought it was stranded. But uh, you know we can go ahead and make it work. Um, and in addition to crimping it, I'm going to go ahead and solder it to make sure that these are are going to be permanent joints here. Um, so it's going to be a, a strong installation in spite of the fact that it's not stranded. So I'm going to stop here and Take this double jacketed wire, cut it back probably about six inches, uh, go ahead and make clean cuts and stagger these. I'm going to stagger these so that the, the um, crimps are not going to be right next to each other. I'm going to have one high, one low, one high, one low to kind of alternate it so that they're not rubbing. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and get these things uh, soldered and um, put the shrink wrap tubing on there. And thankfully, with the length of 100 foot wire, this is going to be probably 20 or 30 feet above the uh, static water line, so it's not going to be submersed, which is just a plus for us. That's one of the reasons why I got this with 100 foot, so we don't have to make a splice below the water line. And who knows, due to some reason, um, improper installation, rubbing, or whatever, that uh, it shorts out in, in the water. And so this is going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to take all the necessary steps to prevent that. So. That's going to be our approach, and uh, we're going to take a little break, and then we'll come back once I get this spliced and peeled back um, to get it uh, crimped and soldered.